when I came out of the house, it was springtime and there were flowers all around, nothing else. And in fact, um, you know, I just felt that I could see her in those flowers. Hello and welcome. We are at Jai Jarotia studio in Noida and uh, we have the pleasure of interviewing five artists who are printmakers and uh, dealing with printmaking. And today we are going to be talking to Kavita Nair, who has uh, a body of work, 40 years of experience. And she is uh, known for her prints, which are mainly etchings, but also for her paintings and for her other disciplines, which she's done lithograph, she's done lino, she's done uh, even uh, serigraphy. So we will be talking to her about the challenges that are faced by printmakers, but also the joys of printmaking and why she became a printmaker. Thank you so much. And thanks to our uh, producers and uh, JM Print. And we are happy to be in Jai Jarotia Sir's studio. And uh, in fact, uh, I would say that uh, I'm very happy to be talking to you because uh, it's nice when you talk to a person who understands art and uh, who's uh, able to uh, imbibe what we as artists are trying to actually uh, talk about in our works. And I'm really happy that I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we can start rolling the ball, discussing a few questions. But my first question to Kavita ji would be, that what made you decide you were going to be a printmaker? How, what was that moment when you made your first print? And tell us the story behind it. Actually, you know, it's very interesting that uh, when I took um, admission in fine arts in Shanti Niketan, I didn't realize that I will be a printmaker. I thought that uh, I will be an artist, you see, because this feeling to be an artist goes back way back when I was 10 years old. Ten. Yeah, like um, I had taken up, I was doing dance also, but along with that son, one day I said, no, mama, I want to do painting. So I took admission in Academy of Fine Arts in Calcutta. And that's where my whole, uh, I would say from the age of 10, I started thinking myself to be an artist. Right. Okay. And there was no this diversification that you have to be a sculptor or a painter or a um, printmaker. It was just artist. And uh, when I went to Shanti Niketan, I realized that uh, there is a field called sh printmaking. And uh, I wanted to be a sculptor, basically, because uh, I thought. Uh, it was more, uh, it had a lot of energy, it felt good that you're, you know, you, you're able to work with your hands. Of course, in painting also you're working, but somehow or the other, I was more attracted towards sculpture. Yeah. And uh, when third year came, when we had to actually uh, select what you want to do, uh, I realized that sculpture is one thing that I may not be able to do all my life because it's a, it needs a lot of space and it needs a lot of like stone carving and how where do you do it? And um, then family pressure is also there. Will you, will I be able to work or not? How will you store your work? How will I store my work? Yeah. Where will I work? So I thought that painting is one thing I could do if I do prints also. Why? Because we had teachers like Somnath Hor and Shanadkar, and it was so nice that they were so inspiring. That is when I realized that uh, this was during my foundation course that I want to do prints. In fact, Somnath Dara has got the history of inspiring many of his students with his passion. Absolutely, absolutely. And his, uh, in, in you know the way he would really approach things and. Embrace it. Completely. Embrace it like he embraced me also. I yeah. would say that when I was in fifth year, I went through this creative block, a horrible creative block and I could not work. And one day uh, I was standing in front of Balitho stone and Somnada comes and he sees me crying. He says uh, in Bengali, Kubita ki holo? I said, what is happening? I said, Kavita, what happened? I said, what is happening? 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 I said, so he said, okay, da, give me your conti. And he started drawing what I had done. And that's where I realized how 
empathetic he was, how he was one with the student. Like he yes. didn't have that ego that I'm a teacher, I should not be working I'm on I'm a her. great Somnath yeah, host. Yeah. He doesn't have that. Yeah. You know, those, those, those days nobody thought he was a great Somnath host, frankly speaking. <laughs> I'm I, talking about, I would argue with that, but anyway. <laughs> no, I'm talking about 76, 77, 78. There were many girls who had crush on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because he used to ride his cycle yeah, yeah. with his jacket on and look beautiful and everybody would be like, Somnath Dhan. Ah, and so, with his so, hat. <laughs> yeah, and with his hat. So I have not, I have not had the good uh, fortune to meet him physically, but I have read so much about him. I've seen so many photographs. Yeah. I have seen his work and I've heard the stories and there are lots of people who really admired him. So I think that he was already having that, that you know, seed. seed. <laughs> to use a, <laughs> to use the metaphor the metaphor of the seed which is yeah. something that uh, Kavita works with a lot yeah uh, but to use the metaphor of the seed he was already having the seed of genius within him yes. and I do believe in the concept of genius I know that there is an argument against it and I also uh, invite that argument and I would love to do that on another day some other time okay but Shomnath Dhar is somebody who's really pushed many young artists into that. Yes, so absolutely. He was your mentor for, for uh, your early printmaking. My, yeah, he and Shonatta. And Shonatta. Yeah, Shonatta, because he was like, we were just discussing that childlike. Like, he was so childlike, so bubbly. Always, and Somnatha on the other side was, on the other hand, was very serene and very calm. So, that both the, uh, the combination of both of these artists really uh, got, got us inspired. Because Somnada, on the other hand, very vivacious, very uh, childlike, and Somnada, very quiet and very, uh, you know, uh, serene. So, this is where, when you're talking about print, like how did I feel when I took out the first print? I still remember it was a small plate, and uh, we were just told to create something. And I created that etching, that you know, you're doing your woodcut and all, but then woodcut is fine. But when you go for your specialization, etching becomes very important for you. And that is when I realized that it's not so easy. It's a very blind process. You are putting your needle onto the zinc plate, uh, coated zinc plate, and you don't know how much pressure you have to put. Because if you put more pressure and if you have to put it in the acid, how long you have to put in the acid. So everything is so adventurous. That is what I loved, the adventure part the of adventure it. The adventure and the discovery. Do you plan your works in advance? And do you prepare, you know, preparatory drawings? And in fact, when you went, when you were uh, abroad, they expected a list of all the things that you wanted. Yeah. So tell us about that story. You see, I never ever plan because what is my way of working is that I can continuously keep working. Okay. It may be uh, print, it may be just uh, drawings. So definitely when I have want to consciously change because after seven, six, seven years, what happens is that you want to I feel I get bored with my imagery, so I want to change. So when I want to change, what I do is I just carry on drawing, sketching and suddenly one day I don't know when I put the coating onto the zinc plate and the zinc plate just goes on without my realizing what I'm planning to do. Of course, the concept is definitely there, but how I'm going to take the uh, translate the concept onto my plate, I have no idea at all. And this is what was uh, very intuitive for me and which I didn't realize till I went to Paris in 97. We, we were, I had to work with a master printer <coughs> and the master printer said that uh, in English that ma'am, uh, how do you want to do the colors, with how many colors you plan? So I said, listen, I don't want to plan anything. You just give me stones to work on. We, I, had to, I had to do so lithographs. lithographs. Yeah. So just give me stones to work on, to draw on. And the day we take the first color, I'll tell you what happens the next day. So every day I had to go back and I would say, now what color should we prepare? But we need the layout. I said, sorry, I don't have a layout. He said, you're so Indian. <laughs> I said, I, I don't know about that. That is what I am. Yeah, I'm an Indian. You can so take it as I just, a compliment. Yeah, I just took it as a compliment. I said, I want to do it intuitively. That's it. Yes. The intuition is very important in art because it is very, especially with print making, very difficult to predict exactly how it's going to go. 
I now, uh, you know, to just uh, bring in the audience, I would like you to tell us a little bit about the process because, uh, you know, there are there is woodcut, there is etching, there is litho, there is silk screen. So, you know, how did you decide that I want to do etchings or I want to do, uh, today I want to try something with uh, relief work or I am going to do something with mixed media. So, how did that happen? Again, that happens very intuitively and that also happens in my case, like if I have done a, a series of work, I am into series of works and suddenly I feel that uh, I am doing etching and now uh, there is a kind of exhaustion point in me that I am not able to discover more, so I change my medium. And that is when I went, I go to either painting or um, you can say serigraphy because I feel that change as we were just talking about the transition is very important. important yeah. yeah, because we, I feel that our lives are so transient. So this is a feeling that I've always got in myself also that I don't want to uh, just get stuck to one thing. I want to change. Okay, so that is where Buddhism comes into me that you know change is very important, interrelation is very important. So my interrelation with people, with nature, that also gets inspired by you know spirituality to a certain extent. And that is when I go to painting, I just do, I just suddenly think though I want to just paint. So I would do a series of paints, paintings or I would just do series of pastels. So whatever comes my way, the material, I just do it without thinking. Without thinking, yeah. okay. Yeah. I saw the series that you did when you lost your daughter and that which has been continuing, uh, it is something which is uh, painful but yet it is beautiful. It is something which gives you joy but it gives you a sense of angst as well. So that duality is something which I've actually experienced in your work and have, having spent the night with uh, the works, I think it was, it was very powerful and I felt the presence also. So I would like you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's... If, uh, you, if you are... No, yeah, 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 it's a, uh, absolutely all right because uh, that is something that um, very, that's very close to me and that will always be with me because I've done, been doing series of seeds, seeds of love, blooms of love in my womb and all these came after 2008. After she passed away, when I came out of the house, it was springtime and there were flowers all around, nothing else. And in fact, um, you know, I just felt that I could see her in those flowers and I felt that why should I miss her? We have spent 23 years of our lives, beautiful time. And that's what my husband also told me, that think of the best times that you had with her. So that is when I just looked at the positive side of it. I could have been sitting inside the house depressed and I could have made depression paintings or prints full of depression. But I don't know, it didn't happen to me because I wanted her to be living with me. So I'm living, I lived with her through our, I'm living with her through these paintings of or prints of flowers basically because I get to see her there and it's, it's a seed that's coming from, we don't know, seed came first or the mother came first, one doesn't really know or the tree came first. So one doesn't really know, the pollination happens all the time. So this is, these are the things that they, re, they really interest me and I, I get really attracted to flowers. And as I was telling you that I did flowers after my college, first time. For the first time. For yes. the first time in 2009, I passed out in 79. After those many years, I first time I painted flowers mm. and it's just going on. Right, right. And coming back to the, uh, you know, the, the flowers are the, are the current uh, expression of your daughter. And uh, there was one thing that you said to me, which really struck me about the cycle of birth and rebirth. Yeah. And this idea that you continue through that, the, the flower, because the flower is, it never gets extinguished even though it falls into the earth, yes. it, it becomes part of the earth, the seeds are spread around and then the flower continues in some form or the other. I would like to touch a little bit about the spirituality in your work as well. 
yeah on a spiritual level you 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 move beyond the pain beyond that you know the physicality that we get trapped within so if you can tell us a little bit about that yeah i would say that uh, i didn't realize that i had a spiritual bend of mind but when i was 17 years old in school in college uh, that was a time of osho okay and my best friend uh, lived she was like we were in hostel her parents from lonavla would send us cassettes ha huh? discourses by osho and actually if i remember clearly this friend from bombay lonavla this friend from mauritius and myself we three were classmates and we would actually eat drink sleep osho you know it was so wow it was so uh, i would say that from the age of 17 it this spirituality just got seeped into myself i didn't realize it i still get goosebumps when i think of it and then till today i still remember the uh, those discourses by osho i didn't like like his uh, sometimes he would pronounce sh as sir which i didn't like somehow <laughs> <laughs> i would always say ki rajnish kyun nahi bolte sh sir kyu bolte hai like sor kyu bolte hai shor kyu nahi bolte hai you know but yeah. that is uh, that is be- beside the point so i but actually was quite radical as well i mean there was there were lots of things about osho which have uh, sparked controversy as well yeah how did you deal with that i didn't have to deal with it you didn't no because i am a person who doesn't get so um, overpowered by anything around me i believe in myself if i've heard of osho i've heard of osho's problems or whatever that was going on in osho ashram i'm not concerned with that i'll take the best out of the person why shouldn't i why should i get uh, uh, stuck by the things that are going around about him so that was a way yeah. i de- dealt with yeah. it and i still till today i deal with with everything like that right. only i am not bothered what's happening around who's saying what because i have created a belief in myself so that belief is more important for me